All right, Buenos Dias, mis amigos. All right, I just want to share a comment that I made in this video by Jamie Welch. Okay, so he's preaching, standing on the mountaintops, housetops, claiming that you can never be saved. All right, so basically saying once saved, always saved is a lie. Okay, so. Um, we have this conversation and it gets hijacked, right? But I want to share one comment with you where he says, uh, Jay Henning Columbia, you literally just said Christians can't sin. This proves that you aren't even saved. You think you can't sin. Jesus told saved Christians over and over to repent education so this guy's this guy looks like he's still in high school and he's educating me on um, I don't know what because uh, what he's none of this what he says is supported by the Bible all right let me one more time you literally just said Christians can't sin this proves that you aren't even saved all right well let's see what first john chapter 3 says verse 9 whosoever is born of god does not commit sin for his seed remains in him and he cannot sin because he is born of god all right now real quickly i think this is interesting if you read john chapter 3 which is the same John. Jesus has this conversation with Nicodemus and he says, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh and that which is born of the spirit is spirit marvel not that I said unto thee ye must be born again there's a clear distinction difference between the flesh and the spirit and so whosoever is born of the Spirit of God does not commit sin for his seed the seed of Christ remains in him. The Spirit of God cannot sin. Therefore, you cannot sin. Whosoever is born of God cannot sin because they are of God. God cannot sin. God cannot lie. And the Spirit of God is everlasting. The Spirit of God never dies, ever. So when you are born of God, you will never die. Whosoever is born of God, of God shall never die so if you are born of the spirit of god you will never die so once you are saved you will never die you have everlasting life so you can't lose your salvation because you will never die right you think about I got, I'm gonna keep this quick whosoever hey, let's do it this way and whosoever liveth and believeth in me this is Jesus speaking by the way whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die right so, 
think whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him, it shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. So whoever drinks of the water that Jesus gives, will, they will never thirst. Never. Never. Ever. So if you're never, ever, never going to thirst, never thirst, that means you will never die. Never. That means you cannot lose your salvation. Ever. That's interesting here. James well says he like he's accusing me. You literally just said Christians can't sin. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin, for his sin remains in him, and he cannot sin because he's born of God. This proves that you aren't saved. So so Jesus wasn't saved, John wasn't saved. Only you are saved? I mean what in the world is going on here? This proves that you aren't even saved. You can't. You think you can't sin. My, the spirit that I'm born of cannot sin. Therefore, I can't sin. Now, my flesh is of a sinful nature, and my flesh will desire to sin, but I'm born of the spirit which has no desire to sin, and the Spirit of God will lead me away from all temptations. That's no guarantee that I won't sin, that I won't commit a sin, but um, even John says, hey, um, my little children, these things write I unto you, that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. All right, so, pretty simple, right? There's a difference between the flesh and the spirit. The flesh wants to sin, and the spirit can never sin. Right? So that, I mean, come on, man. That's not too complicated, is it? This proves that you aren't even saved. You think you can't sin? Jesus told saved Christians over and over to repent. And it, what's interesting, because... It's almost as if this guy's never read the Bible to make such a ridiculous uh, comment here. I think we've got, well, we've got 40, no, 38 mentions. No, no, not even that. Here, I'm sorry. Wasn't that weird? You notice that? 28 mentions in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. In John. In other words, in the book of John, there's no mention of the word repent. Jesus told saved Christians over and over to repent. You see what I'm looking at here? Yet the word repent is never mentioned in the book of John. What do you think about that? So what John just didn't he didn't get the word? And what in the world is going on here? So, in case you don't know, in saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Bring forth, therefore, fruits meet for repentance. 
I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent of your sins. No, no, he didn't say that. He never said that. He said, Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand repent means to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ means to turn from unbelief to belief but go ye and learn what that means I will have mercy and not sacrifice grace ye are saved by grace and not sacrifice, not of works, lest any man should boast. For I am not come to call the righteous. Right? Though they are, I'm righteous. I don't need a savior. But sinners, I need a savior. Lord, have mercy on me. Sinners, to repentance, to belief, faith in the Lord Jesus Christ all right and I mean <laughs> you could quickly do this yourself and see that there is not one single mention of Jesus telling Christians saved is that what he said saved Christians saved how could they be saved if they lose their salvation? But nevertheless, John did baptize in the wilderness and preached the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. In right. uh, verse 15, and saying, The time is fulfilled, the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. The repentance is turning to belief in the Lord Jesus Christ who has laid down his life for the sins of the whole world. So for the remission or cancellation, the removal, the forgiveness of sins, because Jesus was going to offer his and did offer his life as the perfect sacrifice to cover all sin. This idea, oh, I repent of my sin. Well, if that were true, if that's all you had to do, if Jesus going around just, hey, if you sin, just say repent of your sin and then your sin is covered then Jesus would have no need to lay down his life. Jesus would, didn't have to die. If that's all it took to cover your sin is, oh, oops, I had sex with my neighbor's wife. I repent, Lord, I repent. And then now your sin's covered. Is that how that works? If that's true, then Jesus died in vain. If you can do something to cover your own sin, then Jesus died in vain. And it no longer is by grace that we're saved, but rather we are saved by works. Because then if it's not grace, then it has to be works. And if it's not works, then it has to be grace. So which is it? Well, anyways, I just want to share with you uh, this stuff here. It's pretty. It's pretty crazy. Pretty crazy that somebody could pretend to be a master of essentially a master of Israel. Now, what's the difference, right? Now, this guy's pretending be a master of God, master of the scripture, master of knowledge and wisdom. 
master um what's that verse I'm looking for here there it is verse 10 Jesus answered and said unto him Nicodemus art thou a master of Israel and knowest not these things James are you not a master of Israel and you know not the difference between the spirit and the flesh yeah maybe James is no master at all huh well what can I say to help this young man anything would he ever listen would you listen if it was you in his shoes would you listen to what I'm saying yeah I don't know would I listen I don't know I don't know but if I cared about the truth over my own self I would consider right if I was being honest with myself then I ought to consider. Alright? Alright, that's it.